today. I want to talk to you about divine encounter. And there are many things that we encounter in life. But what happens when we encounter God? What happens when we have a divine encounter? Let's go to um, Acts chapter 3, and we're going to read uh, this uh, scripture. Uh, and uh, it says here in Acts chapter 3, verse 1 to 10, I'm reading from the NIV. It says, one day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. Now a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have. But what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly, the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. God bless his word. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today. and We thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity that we can hear your word. And we now open our minds and hearts to you. And we pray that you would speak into our life today. And God, we desire a divine encounter with you. And we pray today, Lord, may this be the day that you will touch our lives and, tra- and change us, oh God. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, this passage tells us uh, a story of a divine encounter with God. Now, we read this story, and I just want you to picture it in your mind and imagine that scene, all right, uh, and put your play, uh, put yourself in that place for a moment. The disciples, Peter and John, were walking to go to the temple to pray. This is what their custom is. It is about 3 p.m. And they met a crippled man uh, at the beautiful gate begging for alms. Now, the word that was used, the word beautiful uh, that was used there in the original Greek language, uh, it actually is not only uh, describes uh, the excellence of beauty, but what it actually means is it means the time of fulfillment. Imagine that. And so, um, it is more beauty in timing. He was sitting literally in a place of the time of fulfillment. Peter holds him by the hand and tells him that in the name of Jesus, walk. And all of a sudden, immediately, the man received strength to his bones and started walking, jumping, and praising the Lord. Now, people witnessed the power of God and were amazed. It had nothing to do with Peter and John. Okay? In fact, here's what the Bible says in Acts chapter 3. Uh, if you read further, verse 12 to 13, it said, When Peter saw this, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us? As if by our power or godliness, we made this man walk. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant, Jesus. Now, here, we see that Peter immediately gives a disclaimer. All right? He says that it was not about their power or because of their godliness, or their righteousness, or whatever, it was the power of God flowing through them. All right? Now, the man basically had an encounter with Jesus through them. You see, because 
they still weren't receiving Jesus at the time. They knew about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but they weren't really recognizing Jesus. And he had to show them that actually it's Jesus who healed this man. All right? And so Peter gives that disclaimer, and disclaimer, and was the power of God flowing through them. The man had an encounter with Jesus, and he gets the glory, not them. So he's basically saying, it's not us. It's not what we've done. He gets the glory. It's Jesus who did it. And the people were amazed because Peter and John were just ordinary men. You know, the scriptures tell us in Acts 4 verse 13, when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, (laughs) no education, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. Friends, when we encounter Jesus, when we encounter God, miracles happen. Amen? Thank you for that amen. You believe that? Hallelujah. The purpose for God's miracles is so that man will turn to God. That man will praise God. God's power is demonstrated that man will turn to God. Today, I would like to share with you what happens when you experience a divine encounter with God. Let me share with you some truths. The first truth is this. The Lord transforms your life. The crippled man was helpless. All right? Now, he was crippled since birth, the Bible says. And now he's already older. And and look what it says in Acts 4, verse 22. For the man who was miraculously healed was over 40 years old. So now he's like almost midlife. And since birth, he has been crippled. He hasn't learned how to walk. He he never knew what walking means. All right? He's always been helpless, and he was hopeless. And and I want you to uh, just imagine this for a moment. They had no wheelchairs. Right? They don't have accessible parking. They didn't have ramps. They didn't have, you know, uh, benefits or privileges for the cripple or the handicapped. I mean, basically in that day, if you were crippled, you were hopeless and helpless. There's nothing else you could do. He was dependent on others to carry him and take him around. That's all he had to do. He had to just wait for someone who would be kind enough to take him out and bring him somewhere so that he could beg. That's basically his life for more than 40 years. Now, at his age, basically, he doesn't have a future. There's nothing. But a divine encounter with God transformed him. He was made whole. Now he has hope. He has a future. Hallelujah. He's no longer dependent on others. He became a testimony of God's power. This was a total transformation. From a beggar to a man praising and glorifying God. From someone who didn't believe God to someone who believes God and glorifying Him. To someone who is hopeless to someone now who has hope. Amen. Notice, my friends, that nothing, uh, notice that God can use anyone to transform their life and bring glory to Him. That's what happened to Him. You know, God transformed His life. Now He can give praise, He can give glory to God. Now, from a person who wasn't even entering the temple, remember, He was always outside at the gate. (laughs) But this time, He went inside, (laughs) praising God. All right, glorifying the Lord. See, so he was able to give glory to the Lord. When God touches your life, he can take you as you are and transform you for his purpose. Amen? So I want to encourage you today. today, You might be here and today and you feel helpless in your situation. I don't know what you got to go through. Many people went through so many things in this pandemic. 
You know, after the pandemic or even with this uh, tragedy, uh, tragedies and crisis around the world with the wildfires and the burning and, and all of this evil that's going around. Now, sometimes people would feel helpless and feel like there's no hope for anything. Or your life maybe seems insignificant right now. And you could never be used by God. And you're thinking, this is it. Uh, uh, God's never going to use me. I'm just going to be sitting in and just listening and all that. But let me tell you today and encourage you that when God touches you, he can transform your life and make you a vessel for his power. Amen? Now, Peter, uh, just an example of that. Remember, Peter. Now, this is God using Peter. Now, Peter himself had a divine encounter with God from a person who was denying Christ. To the man that God used to, to bring thousands of souls into the kingdom of God. And now even be used by God for his power. You remember the apostle Paul. Paul had an encounter with God. And you know he was from a murderer. He was transformed to a great apostle. Friends. A divine encounter. Does not only heal us physically. But more importantly. He heals us spiritually. Friends, people may say, I, I don't have a physical problem. You may be sitting here and saying, yeah, it's nice, but, you know, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm healthy. I, I don't have a physical problem. How does this relate to me? Well, friends, in the spiritual realm, there are also things that cripple us. Yes. There are hurts, offenses, yes. disappointments, yes. discouragement. I mean, they can cripple you. When you allow these things to rule in your life, you are crippled. You can't move on. You are not able to fulfill God's purpose for your life. In a, and it affects your future and your destiny. I have seen many Christians over the time that I've been ministering. I've seen people who have given up because of the issues that have crippled them. You know, they may have been discouraged. Maybe somebody hurt them before. Maybe they, they, uh, they got offended in church and they just given up on church. Uh, maybe there is a, a leader or a friend that just hurt them and, and all of a sudden they've given up. They don't want to do anything anymore. And because now they are crippled. Yeah. Friends, there is nothing that the devil would love more than to see the children of God crippled. There's nothing that he would love more. When, when you have children of God, sons and daughters of God filled with the spirit of God who are, you know, uh, people or children of God. And yet they can't do anything for the kingdom and their destiny is now, uh, 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 is now been aborted because they've been crippled with the issues in life. Amen. Friends, the writer of Hebrews tells us this. He said, Hebrews 12, 1, let us throw off. Everything, say everything. everything. Everything that hinders yeah. and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run, run. with perseverance that is marked, uh, run the race marked out for us. Tell the person beside you, run. run. <laughs> All right. You need to run with perseverance. All right. Friends, there are things that will. Hold us back. There are things that will hinder us. And the writer of Hebrews is saying, everything that hinders you, take it away. Throw it off. Lift it up. I mean, if you're running a race, right? Have you tried that? I mean, if you're running and you've got the, all this weight, I mean, it's hard to run. And then eventually you get tired. But if you take it off, you'll remove all of those things. And then you start running. Keep continuing. You will finish the race. Amen. Amen. And so we are to throw off everything that hinders us. Things that will hold us from, from finishing what God has called us to do. I mean, you and I are need to finish good. Yeah. I mean, it's okay. I mean, it's easy. I always say this. It's easy to begin. It's easy to start. But will you finish? Yeah. Unfortunately, in the, in, in the Christian world, there are many who have not finished good. You know about it. We see it in the news. Things come up and people get discouraged. I mean, we start very good, but will you finish good? Because we need to continue running. And we need to continue pursuing. And friends, sin will cripple you. Anything that is in opposition to God's word and his holiness is sin. 
Sin cripples us from fulfilling our destiny because sin separates us from God. We need to be reminded all the time that sin separates us from our holy God. The Bible says that all of us have sinned. Yes, we fall short of the glory of God. We miss the mark of God's standard. Not one of us is righteous. Since birth, we have already been crippled with sin. We are bound by sin. The Bible says that the God of this world, the devil, has blinded us. Has his desire is to steal, kill, and destroy your life and mine. And the consequence of sin is eternal separation from God to a life of eternal damnation. And friend, there is nothing in this world that can remove sin in your life. Doing righteous deeds to cover it will not erase it. The passing of time will not erase it. Just ignoring it will not erase it. Forgetting it will not erase it. Drinking alcohol or taking cannabis or, you know, taking uh, substance abuse will not erase it. The only thing that can erase sin is the forgiveness of God through a divine encounter with the Holy God. No matter what you do, you cannot earn the righteousness of God. In other words, friends, you cannot save yourself. Until your sins are forgiven, you are crippled. You cannot enjoy the blessings of God. So don't ever think that, oh, I'm going to continue. I'll just live in sin, but it's all right because God loves me. No, you're crippled. You cannot enjoy the blessings of God. But praise God that a divine encounter with God will change your life. He forgives your sins and makes you whole again. He restores you and transforms your life. He sets you free from the bondage of sin and guilt and gives you a new beginning in life. Amen. Amen? This man had a new beginning. Imagine, for more than 40 years, he didn't know what it's like to walk. That's a new beginning. He didn't know what it's like to, to do his own thing. That he doesn't have to depend on anybody else. That's a new beginning. So friend, first truth is he transforms your life. Another thing that happens is the Lord turns your circumstances around. That day was an ordinary day. Would you agree? It was ordinary. It was the same day that he's always been going. I mean, for more than 40 years, they kept bringing him there. The crippled man sat at the gate as he's always done before. All his life. Just begging for money. He had no idea that this day <laughs> he was going to have a divine encounter with God. And the Lord will touch his life and turn it around for good. Now, he was doomed to a life of poverty, always begging for provision. But God took him from out of a life of hopelessness and gave him hope. Amen? And as he stretched his hand out for alms to ask for money, but God gave him something else. How many know that God knows what you need more than what you think? Amen? Amen. You know, he thought that money is what he needed. But God knew that what he needed is an encounter with him. That changed his life. Right? Now remember, he's been begging there. People maybe have given him some money, but that didn't change his life. That didn't change him. He still was there every day for, for over 40 years. But this day, it was different because God was the one who did something in his life. And God knew what he needed. God came and touched him through Peter. Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. But what I have I give you in the name of Jesus. Rise and walk. And friends, Peter didn't have anything. He couldn't solve the man's problem. He doesn't have what the man wants. You know, sometimes we think we could solve the problem. We need to turn people to Jesus. Amen. You know, because if we could solve people's problem, we're just doing it even for your relatives. If your relatives need something, we just don't. I mean, it's good that we help, but we need to turn them to the Lord. Otherwise, they'll keep asking you for help. What they need is God. Amen? 
And that's the reason why when we never we do missions, yes, we, we do humanitarian efforts, yes, we feed, yes, we help, but we turn them to Jesus. Because that's the only one that's going to continue helping them because God is the one that can turn their circumstances around. Praise God, he turned circumstances around. All of a sudden, the power of God entered him and, and into the bloodstream. You know, it, it went into his muscles and into his bones. You know, the cells were, were already dead and dormant for years. All right, I mean, he was, he was like this, I mean, all the time, right? Begging, no, I don't know if I could do this, but all right. Now, he, was, he was just begging, you know, all the time, all doing this. But you see, it didn't matter that he was born crippled. It didn't matter that these muscles have already shriveled and probably died already and, and you know, it, it, it's not working anymore. And it didn't matter that the nerve cells were not even communicating to the brain anymore, yeah. right? Because it's been so long, it hasn't been used, all right? Now, so the brain is not even communicating with this. Nothing was happening. But when the power of God was released, hallelujah, all of a sudden, it started coming into him. It went into the muscles, and he started beginning to touch this, and he touched his ankles and his feet, and he started to walk, and then he started, and then he started jumping. Ah, praise God. <laughs> I mean, he was running all over the place, praising God, praising God, glorifying God. Yes. Now, I don't blame him. I would do the same. I'd probably run around this, this building. Right? Yeah, I could walk. I could run. You would do the same. If you've never done it for more than 40 years. Friends, God is so good. Amen? He became a believer and praised God. Now, here's an important principle. He turns your circumstances around so that you can praise him. Yeah. Amen? You can praise him. You can give glory to God. He sets you free so you can testify of his goodness. Perhaps, perhaps you may be in the same condition. You may feel helpless and hopeless in your situation. And you feel like this crippled man. But I want to encourage you and I want you to know today that there is hope. Don't give up. Because you never know that this day may be the day of your miracle. Amen? I want you to know that there is hope. Nothing is over yet. It's not over yet. Now, think about this. This man has been in this condition for more than 40 years. But he wasn't over. Now, how long have you been in your condition? I don't know. But for him, it was like more than 40 years, probably this is the rest of my life. But no, God changed it. He turned his circumstances around. Don't ever feel hopeless. Don't ever feel like this is it. Then nothing's going to change anymore. Because one encounter with God will turn your circumstances around. All of a sudden... God can change your situation. The Lord's hand is extending to you today. If you will reach out and touch him with your faith. He wants to breathe life into you. And let the power of his spirit come upon you. He wants to take you out of your condition so that you can praise him. He wants you to rise up out of a sinful life. Out of a, uh, a, a passionless life. He wants you to rise up out of any addiction that you may have. To rise up out of any alcohol problem. Rise up out of a, a smoking problem. Uh, rise up out of a lust of the eyes and maybe lust of the flesh. Or to rise up out of uh, a pornography. To rise up out of a, a bad marriage. Or rise up about, uh, above the abusive condition. To rise up above a financial debt. To rise up about... Uh, above your sickness in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Friends, Jesus Christ is reaching out today to turn your circumstances around. Yeah. Would you reach out to him? This could be a divine encounter and this could be your time of fulfillment. He wants to set you free and give you life. 
Friends, Romans 8, verse 1 to 2 says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. People cannot solve your problem. Quit looking to people to solve your issues. Quit looking to the economy to change your situation. Don't look at the government to change your situation. Friends, what you need is a divine encounter with God. He will turn your life around. He transforms you to become a vessel of His power. He turns your circumstances around. And the third truth I want to share with you today is the Lord transcends your expectations. He goes beyond it. When you have a divine encounter, He goes beyond what you expect. Amen? Amen. The crippled man expected to just receive alms, just to receive money. He has been doing that all his life. He has no reason to expect anything else because that's what he, maybe this day will be a bigger money than before. But that's all he was expecting. So the Bible says, uh, when he gave them his attention, he expected to receive something. But what he was expecting is, of course, money. What he didn't realize was that, what, that this day was his day for a miracle. Yeah. Amen? God was about to touch him. He was expecting to receive money, but God had another plan. God had something much higher in mind. <laughs> the alms or the money would just feed him for one day. Or maybe not even enough. But the touch of God, God wanted him to have a better life. He wanted to set this man free from his crippling condition so that he could rise up out of poverty. It could take him out. God wanted to take him out of his condition so he could live an abundant life. Amen. So being fed with money is only, you know, only for the day. But God wants to, live him, uh, go, wants to bless him for a lifetime. Amen? Amen? That's why he tells us even in Deuteronomy that Moses had to remind the children of God that it is God who gives you the ability to produce wealth. Amen. Because wealth will come and go, but the ability comes from God. Amen. So it is God who gives that ability. Never ever forget that it's not the thing that you're running after. It's not those things that you want. It's God who, who we need. And He's the one that will provide for our needs. Amen? Amen. <laughs> so friends, perhaps you are expecting something from God. But if you will yield to His will, He will give you more than what you expect. Just yield to His will. It says in Ephesians 3 verse 20, Now to Him who is able to do immeasurably, more than, we all, more than all we ask or imagine according to His power that is at work within us. In fact, the Bible says that He is able to do immeasurably more. You cannot measure exceedingly more, abundantly, that we ever ask or imagine. If you can imagine it, God can do better than that. Whatever it is that you're you're looking to and you're, you're believing God for. God can do better than that. Whatever your problem is, God is bigger than your problem. Whatever your condition is, God is better than that. He will always do what is better for us. And therefore, we need, the, uh, more than anything else, we need the divine encounter with God. Don't go around running after things. That's why the Lord says, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things that you need, the things that you're running after. You know, many people are running after things because they think that will solve their situation. This is what's going to help me. If I would just do this, if I can just two, have two jobs or three jobs, if I can just work more overtime, and as I do this, I have no time for God. And yet those things... Every time they do it, they just never make it enough. They just keep running in the rat race. And they never get enough. And they never get satisfied. And they're never fulfilled. 
But when they have a divine encounter with God, hallelujah, all of a sudden God can change your circumstances. The favor of God comes upon you. He opens doors when there are no doors. He makes a way when there is no way. He puts you at the top when you're at the bottom. He provides for you. Amen? I mean, God is the one that we need. So that's why we need a divine encounter. I want you to know, my brothers and sisters today, if you've never had an encounter with God, have a divine encounter today. Say to God, Lord, I, I need you in my life more than ever. You know, and, and, and have a divine encounter with God today. Because he will transcend or he will exceed your expectation. Today it is not an accident that you are here. God has a plan for your life. You know, maybe somebody invited you here today. You know, and you're here. Praise God. But still, you came because the Lord prompted you to come. Because he wants to touch your life. It may be an ordinary day for you. You may have been coming here. And you may just feel like it's ordinary. But today may be the time of fulfillment. Amen? Amen? Only the Lord would know this. What is crippling you? What is holding you? Is it sickness? Is it sin? Is it hurts? Is it disappointments? Unforgiveness? Apathy? Lack of passion? Or whatever? Today, reach out to the Lord and let Him touch you. He will transform your life. He will turn your circumstances. And He will transcend your expectations.